And we're back. This is Miami Real Heads, a show where we talk to real heads in Miami. Cool people, cool artists, cool community leaders doing cool things. I have with me today Fabiola and Moises, my friends, uh, artists here in Miami. When I meet other, when I tell other people about you guys, this is maybe just like too easy of a summation, but I'm like, they're the, they're the best AI artists in Miami, which I'm not sure if it annoys you guys that I just summarize you guys as that in your practice. And we're going to get into that. Um, but yeah, you guys kind of are definitely like the most prominent artists I'd say that are working with AI tools and, you know, selling work, showing work. Um, and we're also going to talk about that as well. So, but anyways, very brief introduction. Who are you? Where are you from? Fabiola first. Um, hi, I'm Fabiola Larios, and I am from Mexico. Um, I am an interdisciplinary artist. I started with painting, then collage, then glitch art, video art, vijing with memes, and now with AI. So, like right now, on, well, usually my work is about uh, the perception that we have of ourselves on the internet, like how we build our internet persona. And I think that, and surveillance capitalism, especially surveillance cameras. So um, I am Leo. I, <laughs> and um, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I'm just... I'm just very happy to be here and thanks for inviting us to to talk and like we're very excited for for this project. Thank you. Very glad to have you. All right, Moises, what about you? What about what's your background? You know, what do yeah. you do? Uh, my name is Moises Sanabria. Uh, I was born in Venezuela, but I grew up uh, here in Florida since I was nine. Um, so definitely been here a, a long, a lot longer. Uh, I went to school at New World School of the Arts, then I graduated from Fine Arts at Cooper Union in New York, and then came back in 2018 into Miami and have just seen it grow exponentially since that time, like 2009 was when I was here. Uh, and I've always been interested in creative technologies, whether that was coding, uh, on the web, uh, Python, just different ways to like make creative things uh, digitally. And then in 2018, I got the chance to uh, do my first like full like machine learning, like AI art. At the time, it was machine learning art boot camp uh, in Berlin, uh, the School of Machines, Making and Make Believe. And since then, I've been just kind of deep diving more and more uh, in the AI space, the creative space, uh, data science. And in 2020, uh, Fabiola and I, we had the wonderful opportunity to, during the pandemic, take some classes together and then from that moment on, we started collaborating a lot uh, in the AI space and then getting that in Web3. And I think now we're at a point where we're just kind of entangled in between the crypto scene, the AI space, education, fine art. Yeah. That's sort of your four totems right there, the education, AI, crypto, and fine art. And you guys kind of like have like a leg in, in all of that. Um, all right, cool. So... I want to start with a question that's just going to be like a zinger right off the bat. Do it. But it's for it's for Fabiola. Do it. Why okay. all the fuss about data sets? So, like, as we, why are data sets important? You know, like if data sets are the things that inform AI and AI's behavior, why is it so important that we like pay very close attention to the kind of data that we feed it? And um, why is like no one really thinking about that right now? Well, that's I can talk about this like for hours, but in like in a few words, um, data sets are important and being able to be recognized by systems that are um, feed with or fed with. Uh, data sets from humans um, it's just like the machine acknowledge your existence and if we don't exist as a whole human you know like 
like as humans because we like usually AI is more trained in white skin and like you know like very eurocentric um white features and what i've been like what i've experienced in my life is how in the airport when i came when i used to come to the us as just uh, with my mexican visa i had to retake the pictures like one two three times because the systems don't recognize my face because I am not like like as light as it could as I could be for the systems to recognize me and also I always give this example of the uh, soap dispenser that when you or when you go to the bathroom like you have like all these automated like things that in your daily life and when I like I I didn't think about this I think I saw this um documentary that um about bias I don't remember the name do you remember the name it'll come it'll come to me I uh it was like code coded bias coded bias, bias. Coded yeah. bias. so the person in the documentary mentions like how systems don't work with dark dark skin and then that's when i thought about all the times that i was just like putting my hand below the soap dispenser and i couldn't get the soap and like when you go to the bathroom like there's a, a button there and if the sensor doesn't like see that you are like as like reflective with your skin like it doesn't flush so they put that fucking bun button so you can just like click it and then it's just like it flush but it's just like that's a failure in the system you that's don't flush. that's you don't that's the and that's a failure because right now i talk about like like bias in ai a lot and I think it's important because if we notice this in art is is because there's a problem way beyond that like it's just like how systems work how we need to be acknowledged in every type of ethnicity how we need to be acknowledged as different human uh, beings like different races like different uh, features and there's also like this example in Apple, I think back in 2016 or 2018, like kind of, uh, there was like this person that has, that she bought an iPhone and it was new and it has the face recognition uh, feature. And then when she unlocks the, the phone, then like it unlocks, but then she gives the phone to her coworker and her co-worker can unlock the phone and this was in asia yeah they're not white women exactly and they're and it's just like like they change the phone and like they like they like kind of apologize and then like it's just like they didn't change anything i don't know how works how it works right now but that was like a really big problem and also like n there is not only bias it's just like it's me misogynistic me like there's like because before in these text to image systems like uh, platforms uh, to make art you could put like a person uh, a doctor and then it would appear a man a white man yeah and, like it's just like ridiculous yeah i want to i want to get into that very specifically and um and both of you can comment on this and I wanted to set up this conversation on that tip because I know that's like this is where you kind of like work and it's something that, you know, you have a lot of like thoughts about. You've had you had these experiences like with the soap dispenser and with like customs and whatever. And now you're sitting down with like cutting edge artificial intelligence tools. Both of you are Dali, Stable Diffusion and other stuff that's coming out and like you just mentioned one right there where like a doctor, it's more likely to show you like a guy like what do you guys see really lacking you guys are more you guys use these tools more than most people more than 99.999 percent from the insider's view like what biases do these tools have 
Well, there's this bias when you put like, I don't know, I was, I had this artwork commissioned by Pancake Gallery um, called uh, bornintobias.net. It's a website. If you want to go there, you can visit my website. It's a net art piece. So I'm, I made it because I was looking in Dali because I always look for stuff that reflects myself in whatever I do. And I thought that with Dali or Stable Diffusion, like if I put like Mexican or Latin or something, it would just come with something different, even mid journey. But when, when you use this, tools and before like they have been making like re like a lot of updates and like they're like making better the data set but it's just like when you put mexican they always put like a sombrero you know and like the mustache even for women and that's something that is like very specific in my work because everything that it's like right now in like in ai like the data sets that these models were trained on is just like the stereotype of whatever is like a being like a like from african people from asian people from latin america people like like even for queer people like if you put like um, a non-binary person blah, 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 or a queer something you have to be very specific because in the in the prompts in the results that you have from like directly from the prompts if, even if you put like a human or a person it's always going to be like white and men and um, and then it's going to be like a white woman and then it's just like they're not going to show you queer people like because it's not as relevant as it should be because we need to be inclusive so like systems like acknowledge or like as i said like our existence because then Like, what happens if a Tesla doesn't have enough information of the skin color or the features or, like, the height, like the height uh, or something? It's just, like, it's just stupid how we want, like, automate everything, but we don't teach these systems to work how, like, in the world we're living in. And they're trained, like, if we're in the 90s or something. And, uh, like, I don't know, I think we we need to do something because as in art like it does like it doesn't work in the other like in like in the other side of the of art like beside art like it this doesn't work even for customs like I, like i said yeah yeah totally i'm like i'm suspicious that the data sets that they trained all of those programs on are like deviant art and like myspace like drawings and like all these like weird sources that are just like yeah extremely biased and like present a very specific um but also those tools do some like really amazing stuff that you guys use and what is emerging out of ai right now that's like has potential that's like something that's something that's like rewarding or something that you think is gonna gonna be good for us if we pull it off correctly uh i mean there's uh this company called spawning that uh, actually is trying to find ways that you can opt in or opt out of data sets so the idea is like there's actually some kind of protocol or process in which you have more control over what data gets trained on Uh, so I think we do have to create these avenues and solutions that weren't there before because we didn't even think necessarily that, you know, this math equation was going to work. And so you, you know, scientists or whoever goes and, you know, interns <laughs> go and scrape the internet in however they could. And now that we have like real working demos and companies and, and the industry, uh, we kind of have to go back and be like, okay, well now what's a fair way that, you know, someone's data can be included or even this concept of royalties, right? So if you're using a living artist's name in your uh, text prompt to make a, a generation, like how, how should that work out? Like legally, economically? Uh, so I think there, there's already conversations about that. Uh, yeah, I'm super curious how it'll all play out. But I, I mean, I think there's rules in general as a, an individual where you can still use these tools and 
you know, choose not to include some artist's name or, you know, like Fabiola, like speak out about the things that are still wrong. And then the industry will kind of reflect on that and adjust. Yeah, for sure. The, uh, what, what is, um, can you talk about the company slash app that you're working on that combines AI and video that released that really cool, uh, video online? Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm working right now for a startup called Eden.Art, and it's uh, founded by a really known AI artist and just technologist named Gene Kogan. And so I, he's the one that taught me back in 2018 uh, all about like machine learning art and stuff. So I think as a professor and now as like a leader of this team we're building, uh, we're kind of doing it in a more... I'd want to say fun ways, like how, how is it not just like this transactional vending machine that's giving you like, you know, the Coca-Cola of your dreams, but like whatever you get out is like an input for someone else. And there's some kind of like gaming aspect or like, what if you put, and there's already some demos out there of these things, but it's like, if you have an infinite canvas and everyone's drawing on the same canvas, like what is that world you're building together? Uh, using these tools. So uh, with Eden.art, you can go and visit the website. Uh, and also we have a Discord. Uh, you can use our generator models and you can animate between two text prompts. So we could do, you know, divine nymphs flying in the sky and then divine nymphs like on the, on the beach. And then it'll animate from those two like keyframes uh, without any kind of other you know, Photoshop or After Effects or anything. It'll just be the bot in the Discord. Uh, and yeah, we're just kind of uh, building a lot more tools uh, for people to have this like AI social network, like where you're you're creating, but then you're also, there's like a credit system. We're really Web3 friendly. So you connect with your wallet and just kind of trying to continue to entangle the two technologies. Cool. So that's Eden. And then what about AI24? Yeah, so AI24, I think, is the more, like, culture-heavy, like, part of what I'm interested in and we're both interested in is um, less on the technology. Like, we're not trying to build apps that do certain things. It's like there's so much out there already. There's a large industry. There's, I don't know, 50 companies, that, you know, all trying to compete to be, you know, the next AI Facebook or something. <laughs> and And instead, it's like with all this generative production, like, how do you like curate and hone in on who, who's doing things that you've never seen before and kind of put it out there in a live stream. Uh, so the idea is that there's so much content out there that this live stream could go on forever with new content. Like, I don't know, maybe this decade, like I, I believe it. Like when I started back in April, I, didn't, I only had maybe like 30 minutes worth of content and we already have more than 24 hours worth of content. Uh, and then kind of the the balance or the complement there is to mix it with uh, real musicians or artists that are like making physical things or doing performances, like things that are a lot more close to like live events and connecting with people. And how do you have the two things like AI and then like a very people centric, uh, yeah, just like place to connect because the idea would be you, this live stream would be on 24 hours. Uh, so right now it's on, like beta mode, uh, but we're going to be streaming a lot more soon. We're doing a lot of partnerships with different organizations and collectives and yeah, just trying to get the, the stream going live 24 hours uh, sometime next year. Do you guys feel um, like a, a duty to share your knowledge and what you've learned and with AI and with making the work and... Um. So the thing is that also because when, like the first time that I was interested in making AI art, I saw this exhibition in 2017 in Soho and I saw this artist that it blew, he blew my mind. It was just like, it was just like this Eureka moment and he was making like all these, um, Invisible Images is the like the the name of the exhibition. Like the image looks back at you, and it was just like all this like the a data set of 
full of images and you could see it like projected in a wall. His name is Trevor Paglen and he's just like, I, I want to be the next Trevor Paglen, but in female and Latin. So you heard it here. Like, <laughs> Real Heads, volume two. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like, he's very political. He is an amazing artist that inspired me. And I, and I was always like, wondering how can I do AI art and when I came back to Mexico I, I I just noticed that everything that was related to AI was like super expensive like workshops and whatever you wanted to do it was like super expensive for me and so when we started like teaching classes uh, we had this opportunity to be to teach in in school of machines make believe in in berlin but it was like through the pandemic and like through those like that um those months so we they had like this we teach it like the workshop in spanish and then in english and when we teached in spanish i was just like i need to get all my friends from mexico like here like and we need to have all these people because they had like this discount because if you come from this um i don't want to say like third world country but it, it kind of is like that because if you cannot afford these workshops then they give you a discount and it's like you can pay whatever you can and that's when i was just like i'm gonna tell everyone that i know that they're making digital art because i like we come from digital art and digital art back like like before NFTs, it was like, it wasn't a big deal. It wasn't like nothing at all in galleries or art fairs or whatever. You just needed to be like a very famous person that really made it through digital art and be really well connected because if not, then you are fucked. And so I was just like, all my friends are, are doing like, digital art and that are like have asked us how we made like this AI machine learning art before because I never wanted to call it like AI it was just like machine learning because that was that is the name of like the GANs that we were training and so that's how we wanted to like share knowledge for people that didn't know and they couldn't have the resources because living in a third world country is like very tough to learn new technologies because you don't have access to any of that. And then it was like, okay, then we go to like, like this English workshop that like we're speaking in English. And I also like onboard people that were from Mexico or I think, uh, I don't know, Colombia or Chile or something. So it was just like, we are trying to people to learn more because before when we were teaching, it was just like, it was like this black box that was just like judge all the time. Like, oh, AI art, you're an asshole, you know? Like you are just doing like whatever you're doing with the computer. And we had like horrible comments and people were just saying shit about it. And like this directly indirectly things you know and now all like all of these people just just gave up on the ai art and it's just like because this is the future this is like the future of art like you cannot deny it you cannot deny ev like the evolution and like how technology is evolving and you cannot deny how like art always needs to go like one step like like it's growing it's i don't know how to say it but it's just like it's it's getting bigger and you need to go with that because that's how like the story and the history of photography is just like before um camera obscura it was just like the lenses and caravaggio used to, do, to use those lenses and that's why in a lot of paintings and like in that time that in Spanish, it's called like um, kind of like obs obscurantism, kind of like that. I don't know how to translate it in English, but it's just like at that time that that 
people were painting like that's why Caravaggio doesn't have any sketches because he was painting directly of the scene he was looking at but the scene with the lens was just like inverted and that's why you can see in a lot of paintings from that time that people are le like um left no left-handed and before if like if if we know like kind of like a lot of history of you know like people that were left-handed were seen like demons or devils or whatever because it's because they are demons yes <laughs> i'm just kidding i'm just kidding but it's just like that's that's like you cannot like normalize something that you know that in those times was not normal so it's just like in art it's just like something that is weird and that and that's the use of the lens and then the camera obscura and then how it was evolving and before people were just like painting and drawing with shades and with um how do you say uh like shadows from curtains that they were just like putting light through and it's just like it's fascinating how it, in the history of art like people try to use different things to make art and it was using like this technology that was not used and like be like a blanket from a blanket to ai is just like a long long like uh, way and before also like in the in the cave uh, art like the Altamira caves and stuff it's just like you can see how they were trying to make a lot of things like like in the walls but also in the ceiling like in the roof or the ceiling and it's just like they like the theory that it's like around that is just like they put fire And the drawings that they put in the ceiling is just like they lay down like like if you're watching a movie and then they, you just see like how they were looking at those images because it was kind of entertainment, but also it was just like that's technology in like at some point that was the like the first technology and you can... I can keep going like Melies and stuff, you know, like it's just like I am very passionate about technology no, and the history makes, of it, art. It makes <laughs> sense. It's like... Um... Every time a new technology comes out and then a group of artists take that technology and push it and create things that make people feel things, those people are the ones that are in the history books pretty much every time. It's like the recipe is always new technology, school of artists that make like some work that either makes people angry or happy or sad or whatever. And then those are like, you know... Um, So yeah, I honestly, yeah. I think I, that's honestly how I think about you guys and, and what you guys are doing right now. I um, think that in in that though, like by either making artwork or talking about it, like the people listening around you, or at least whether they're there to learn or they're there to judge or whatever, like you just open communication because like in comparison to a place like Twitter where you might not, you know, someone might not know you you'll just hear the opinions that are like quite harsh and like it's there's a lot of fear in technology and like where things are headed and i i know there's a lot of things that are problematic in what's happening but the more you learn the more you can be like hone in and be like okay it's going to be problematic in this way and now that i know i can solve it in these ways and so you i think part of it is just yeah you kind of have to spread the knowledge and and see who's open to to listening and And understanding like oh there is a history to to this trend and you know i can either you can even have more power on what to vote on because like if you understand how the ai is working when you know these things maybe it'll be in governments like oh well we have an ai president oh it will be and and you'll be like yes but not this one i like you know this <laughs> version and then you, you kind of yeah you, you know how to discern which ai you want to vote for yeah and Yeah, so in, in some ways, I think it will more and more see how this will normalize. We showed Dali to uh, my my younger sister. Um, she's 12, and she's like, oh, this is where people make memes? Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> that was her. And it's extremely cute. It's not even like uh, she's not questioning how powerful these things is. She's like, oh, all those memes I've seen in my life They came from, from here. This. Yeah. And it kind of, she's like not wrong in a sense, in like a weird future, spiritual yeah. sense or whatever. Um, you know, I also think I want to like, say something say it, say it. really quick. Go ahead. When we had the MCR live, uh, I noticed that Nick had his microphone like really close to his mouth. And 
I, I try to make Moises to put it like closer, but it's just like for the volume, I think because the first, right? Okay. The first uh, part of the or of our podcast there, we needed to have the like, microphone really close. So it's just like here. Get close here. Hello, hello. <laughs> Sorry, OCD. <laughs> um, yes. My keep, other keep question. Going, please. Wait, I forget. To... Oh, I was just gonna say something about how you guys are teaching, you guys are educating, and how like I also think that leadership is kind of. I what made me think of this is you were like, oh, someone's there to either judge your work or listen and learn something and yada yada. And I think nowadays most people just even if they're going somewhere to judge something they are they say they're there to learn or whatever you know and i think leadership these days and probably always has been a lot about teaching and sharing knowledge like we're talking about right now but now it's like all the 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 leaders of the young people and the leaders online are constantly sharing knowledge and constantly empowering their followers you know it's like a thing of you know it's like they're they're like help like how do i get alpha in following you online you know what i mean and like that person shares alpha with their like audience and that's like these these models of like leadership that are i think going to work for you guys because a lot of people need to know about the ai stuff and are confused including myself and i like rely on you guys to kind of like navigate like the waters of it you know yeah no i i, I think there's a lot of structure more structure coming like just the the idea there's a lot of like think tanks and um these investment firms like these vc firms that are just kind of scoping how large the industry is going to be and it's they you know it's said it is said like in uh, some tweet uh, we can share the tweet but it's uh like ai will do for content production what the internet did for broadcasting so it's you know this one of these things that you you it's hard to think before the internet if you didn't live that um you know most of us had that transition but it'll be uh, very much the same with ai where it's just immersed. It's in your phones, and you know you you can't even be like, oh, I can't download an app without AI. It's like everything will have it, and you'll just it, it'll impact in those ways. And so now that we're early, early, <laughs> like you know, since like whatever 2012 was when like people were kind of diving deeper, and then now 2022, 12 years, uh, 10 years later, we're seeing like a, a lot of adoption, even more adoption than in crypto, I would say, and. It's like when when Photoshop was released and there were there was like this demonstration where it was just like, oh, yeah, you can grab this from this like this horse from this publicity like and then you put it in this picture that somebody else took. And it was just like the kind of was like the like the invention of digital collage. And the, it's just like the same thing because people could be like, because people are going to always be like bitching about something. They're always going to be like judging something. They're always going to be like against something because that's how the world works. Because if everyone would be like, like, uh, like if everyone agree with everything, then like, where is like the, like the, um, how are we going to grow if there are not like, op like oppos opposite opinions in, in things like, if we all do the same and everyone was just like happy, it's just like then we wouldn't be uh, like advancing, evolving that much because we we need these people to be bitching about something because that's how the world works. Conflict is good sometimes. Exactly. <laughs> all right, y'all. This has been an informative discussion. Is there anything you want to say to the audience before we uh, pass off? I want to say something. I want to say... <laughs> I always want to say something, but I want to say that we are going to make this AI nymphs and we're going to we're going to put them in AI 24. And it's not like we don't know yet what's going to happen, but it's going to happen. We don't know if Brett and Tara and Camila, I don't know where Camila is, but we don't know. <laughs> if how is the team gonna like react to this how if this is gonna be something extra for the nfts or not is a property or whatever but the thing is that you're gonna see new nymphs created with ai but you have to mint a nymph today 
if you want. If you don't want, it's okay. Get a nymph to get the AI nymph. Mint a nymph. Get a AI nymph. nymph. Yeah. Yeah, All right, thank thanks, you for having y'all. us. Fabiola and Moises, thank Real you. Heads, Volume 2. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.